I switched to Tick Tick about eight months ago, and along the way I've learned a handful of tricks. In today's video, I'll show you how I use Tick Tick to keep my life on track. Tiago Forte has this great quote about getting ideas out of your head. It says, don't play catch and release with your thoughts. Your ideas have value, but tend to arrive when you least expect them. By making it a habit to capture and save them, you can allow them to live forever in a trusted system that reflects your goals and interests. This also leaves your mind free and clear to come up with more ideas. And so for me, that's a combination of both Tick Tick and Obsidian. I get ideas and inspiration at the worst time. It's usually when I'm knee deep in something else that I really shouldn't stop working on. But previously what I would do is I would actually go stop and work through that idea and then have to pick back up where I was. And th this can happen multiple times a day and it's, it's a real productivity killer. With Tick Tick's quick capture, I was able to stop this habit because I can quickly jot down my idea and go back to what I was doing. So let me show you how that works. So usually I'll be in Notion, Slack, Figma, busy doing something else and a to-do or something I need to remember will come to mind. And I can use these three fingers on Control, Alt, and Command at the bottom of my keyboard, press spacebar, and that'll bring up the quick capture within Tick Tick. Here I can just jot down whatever it was. So remember to follow up with Isa about XYZ. And most of the time I'll keep it that simple because this is gonna drop it into my inbox and I'll deal with it then. If I'm feeling really adventurous and am willing to potentially lose my train of thought, I can say next Tuesday and get some timing on it. Notice that it turns blue to indicate that. Or I can hit shift and tilde to put it into a specific list. But this is all completely optional. If I don't do this, it'll go to the inbox, which is something I'm gonna call through um, each day for the most part. Um, but if I already know what list I want it to go into, I can add it to that specific list. We'll get more into lists here in a few minutes. Um, the other piece is if I need to go into more detail, I can press my tab key and that'll let me add a description, do tags. I really don't do a ton of tagging or flagging, um, but changing the list is a thing. One note about this is you can't put attachments into this window but you can put attachments into the to-do once you've added it. So I'll show you that here in a little bit. So that's my quick capture workflow. So I can also do the same thing within my browser. If I see some text that I wanna to remember to follow up on, I can right click on it and hit add to TickTick. -tick. And this is from having the TickTick -tick Chrome extension, which is right there. For me, this is basically the only thing that it does for me is allows me to quickly add tasks from here. And then finally, I've got a dedicated video on doing quick capture in iOS, which is the other place that I need to do this. Again, might be dictating in the shower or I might be on a walk with my wife and we'll have some conversation that I wanna to remember to follow up on. And so I'll put the link to that video up there. All right, next up is going to be the inbox. So let's pull that up. So when you quick capture something into TickTick -tick and you don't put it into a specific list, by default, it's gonna come into your inbox. And so this is my inbox, this is actually my real inbox of all the things that I need to get done of varying types. And I try to go through this at least once a day to try and clean it out. Um, but at worst, I will do it once a week on Sunday when I do my weekly review. So on Sunday, everything should leave the inbox and go into a list, ideally with timing. So my general strategy here is things in the inbox do not need timing but before they leave the inbox, they should have some timing window, whether it be today, tomorrow, two weeks from now. Um, I try not to have things leave the inbox without timing because once they go into another list, I don't often dig into the details of those lists. And so I, I don't want something to get lost at the bottom of the list. Um, it feels like the JIRA backlog all over again, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. So let's take Let's take one of these random things. This is something I actually did this morning. Um, I remembered that I needed to call my mom back because she wanted to get our daughter this weekend. And so um, I needed to follow up with her. I was supposed to follow up with her yesterday. I ended up following up with her this morning and we can mark that off. If this was gonna stay in here for a while, I would probably move it into outreach. But again, I'll get into lists here in a little bit. So let's mark that one as done. I use my inbox in Tick Tick to capture everything that's going on in my brain. Again, the big goal here is to get it out of my head and into somewhere that I'm gonna to remember to check. And so 
These might not all be to-dos, but they are all things that I wanna follow up on. So for instance, I was going around the web and I noticed this website from Ali Abdal. And one, I really like Ali's work, but two, when I was reading through this, I really liked the typography and the use of color. And one of the things I try and do is just capture things that um, really resonate with me design-wise. So that if I'm ever stuck and I'm trying to work on a project, I'll have some inspiration to remind me of things that I really enjoy. And so this will likely end up living in Obsidian, but I put it in here so that I'll remember to follow up on it. Again, this is not my final, this is not the final resting place for this content. This is just a reminder to file this away when I have more time. Again, I was probably doing some research on something else when I came across this and I didn't want to lose my train of thought on what I was working on. And so this allows me to do that, satiate that desire to remember this and get right back to what I was doing. Previously, I'd have to stop what I was doing, work through that idea, file it away in the moment. At that point, I've lost my train of thought on what I was working on. So this has been a gigantic upgrade in my work life and also in my home life when doing research. So from here, I actually needed to call my dad, but he called me yesterday. So that took care of that. Um, let me grab something out of here. So for instance, um, do another highlight. Maggie Appleton did these illustrated notes on Tiago Forte's Building a Second Brain. And I've listened to some of Tiago's podcasts, but I've not dug much deeper than that. So I wanted to take the opportunity to read through her notes and internalize more of that. So this is gonna go into my content backlog. I used to use Pocket to keep things. And then I realized that Tick Tick was really where I went when I was trying to figure out what I was gonna work on next. So I ended up moving all of my content out of pocket that I needed to follow up on and into Tick Tick as far as things that I need to consume. And then I'll put the notes or the artifacts from that into Obsidian, which is where I'm putting everything else. So let's move this to the content backlog and it's an article. I remember a little bit earlier in the video, I mentioned that everything that leaves the inbox should have a time. I think the one exception to that is the content backlog. Um, where it's really just a backlog of things to read when I have time in the little pockets of my day or before bed. And the timing doesn't really matter there, it's just consuming a little bit all the time. So everything within the content backlog for the most part doesn't have timing, but everything else does. All right, next topic is lists. And when I started with TickTick, -Tick, I had two or three lists and I've slowly expanded to more over time. And let's jump over to Today View and I'll show you why I have a few is they allow me to organize my day um, with some form of prioritization. So I look at TickTick -tick, um, usually before my work day and a handful of times throughout the day, um, usually before and after lunch and then also towards the end of the day. And what I need to see changes as the day goes on. So I have my strategic work list, which is designed to highlight things that I think move our company forward and will have meaningful impact um, beyond today or next week or maybe even next month. And then there is junk work, which are, and <laughs> it's, it's a little crudely named, but they're things that just need to get done and aren't gonna move the company forward strategically. If I were to do them versus someone else do them, it doesn't really matter, but someone's gotta do it and it might as well be me in some occasions. And so that's how I differentiate between things that I think have lasting impact and things that only have temporary impact. So please excuse the names, but that's the names I use for them internally. Um, I then have my routines. So I have work routines and I have home routines um, and those are shown here. And the benefit of having them as separate lists are if I don't have time to deal with routines right now, I can collapse them. Or similarly, um, I'll have this home list and if I'm heavily focused on work and I don't wanna see home, I can collapse it. Similar thing with evening, Again, if I have a busy day at work and looking at what's gonna happen this evening is gonna distract me, I can collapse all that. So oftentimes what I will do is during my work day, this will be my view. And then towards the end of the day, I may expand the rest or after dinner or after we put Charlie to bed, I'll, I'll open everything up. So that's why I use list to separate those things out while I'm in this today view. The other benefit is they have color coding when you get over into the calendar view. I'll show you that here in just a bit. Um, but those are the two primary reasons that I have separate lists. So let's get back to work and home routines. 
the intention behind this is that life in many ways is cyclical. And there are things that you just have to do on a regular basis. I remember back in my 20s, I wouldn't schedule a haircut until I realized my hair was too long. And then later on in my 20s, I realized the benefit of scheduling your next haircut when you finish the current haircut so that your hair doesn't have to get that long. And that's a really silly example, but I've taken that same learning and applied it to many things in life. Things with our biweekly sprints at work, I know I need to prepare the design work at a certain point in the sprint for us to be on schedule. Um, let's go through and look at a handful more of these. So yeah, so we do monthly updates for our leadership team. I review our OKRs every quarter. Um, I have a weekly call with important customers that I want to prep for and make sure that call is all set up and ready to go. On the home side of things, um, I have a couple things here. I want to make sure I have a special day with my wife, a special day with our entire family, and then a special day with just Charlie each month. And this gives me that reminder that I need to prep that for the current month. Um, our cars need to get registered. Our cars need to be inspected. Um, before, I'd always get a fit of anxiety, wondering, oh, is the inspection out for the truck? Trying not to get pulled over for that. Um, I remember to shave. Uh, I do weekly yoga. I do a handful of workouts throughout the week. Um, and then I have weekly and quarterly note review of all the content that I produced um, over that time period. All right, heading back over to today's view, I wanna show you a handful more lists. So I have my home list, which are things to do relating to our home. Um, it's really, the difference between evening and home is a bit subtle, but home things are things that I might be able to tackle at lunch and evening things require a little bit more time and really can't be tackled until the end of the day. I have my personal development list, which are things that I think move me as a human forward, important articles to read, things about productivity. Again, it's kind of a curated set of articles that are of importance. I have my outreach list, which I'm gonna do a dedicated video on outreach. Um, I'm very much an introvert by nature and I get very sucked into my work and I forget to reach out to people. And so my outreach list are key people in my life that I wanna to remember to keep in touch with that I've historically done a bad job of that, not because I don't value them as people, but because I'm just really bad at communication. And then on the YouTube side of things, I have two lists. I have YouTube channel, which are general improvements to the channel that I started this channel about a month ago and there's plenty I can do to make it better. So that's a general list of things I can improve. And then I have my video ideas, which are different ideas and where they are in the pipeline. Um, so I can jot down an idea, throw it into the list, and then as I'm picking a video for each week, I can look there. I have the productivity blog, which originally when I started this YouTube video, I originally thought it was gonna be a productivity blog, and then I realized I'd much prefer creating videos instead. Um, I have my reviews, which are the weekly, quarterly, and nightly reflection. Again, I think some of that is still in the home routines and it can get split out to reviews. Family is anything related to my family. And then this list is also shared with my wife. Store is a general list of things we need from the store. I don't go to the store all that often. Marshy does most of our grocery shopping. So these are random things I need. Like I need a phone holder for my desk for aesthetics. And I need metric Allen wrenches to tighten something in the shower. We touched quickly on content backlog earlier, but this is just random pieces of content that I have yet to consume that I think are interesting. Maybe people have recommended them to me. Maybe I got them through Feedly and then put them in my read later. I try to clear out my read later on a regular basis. And so instead of them living in read later, if they're longer than about 10 minutes, I will throw them over here so that that doesn't get cluttered up. Video games, music, um, I try to keep the podcast list empty because I have air and I can put that in air. Um, books for the most part will go to Goodreads, but this is a holding area in the meantime. I have no idea what's here under food. Oh, it's food that people have recommended to me that I haven't had a chance to try yet. Um, TV shows and then trails and trips. Then I have my idea list. These are random ideas that I have that I think are interesting, may have merit, may not throw them in here, come back to them a little while later and see how you feel about them. And then I won't get into my other lists or my archive lists. I am not a big user of tags, um, but I do have a few. Again, I don't use them for anything mission critical. And then on the filter side of things, I, I only have one filter 
and that's related to unscheduled things. So this is how I catch when I forget to schedule things when I move them out of the inbox. And so you'll see there are a handful in here that I probably should go back and put dates on. The last major thing I wanna walk you guys through is calendar view. So I split my time between the today view that I showed you earlier in this video and the calendar view. And calendar view is where I spend majority of my time, um, usually in this week view, and this allows me to see all the things for today, tomorrow, and the next few days. And it's generally how I figure out what am I gonna have time to tackle this week. So um, this is also where I do my general time blocking. So when we're doing our sprints, how do I figure out how many things I can handle in a given, in a given sprint? Um, so what I'll do is when I have a task, I'll try and block it out based on what I think it'll take. And with Tick Tick, I can actually drag those items and hold space for them. All right, so to give you an example of how I'll time block, um, one of my action items for this week is to make sure each person on the outreach list is set to repeat. And so right now it's an all day item or just a general task. It doesn't have any concept of how long it'll take. And so that's usually how I'll rough out things. So if something came from the inbox and I didn't have a feel for how long it would take, it would default to just be assigned to a given day. But as I start to think through my week, usually on Sunday, <laughs> on a bad week on a Monday, um, I'll go in and I'll try and slot in these things when I think that will occur. And here inside of TickTick, I'm actually able to bring in all of my different calendars, so both my personal calendar and my work calendar, to see where there are things going on that are going to intersect with this. So I've set this up now where as I finish items, they hide and calendar events from previous days hide as well. Um, but for a long time, I ran it where they didn't do that. Let me uh, show you how you would change that. So if you go into view options here, so if you click right here on view options, right now I have show completed items turned off and I have show future cycles turned off. And the reason why I do this is one, my week gets really busy and it can sometimes be a bit overwhelming and I wanna focus on what I need to do next instead of what I've already completed. I'm gonna look at what I completed for the week during my weekly review and I don't need to constantly think through that while I'm trying to get through my week. The other piece to this is I have show future cycles hidden because there are some cyclical things that I have on my to-do list. So one of the things is I try and do reflection each night on what I did. I don't know, there it is. <laughs> so I haven't done it since Monday, um, but here I'll show you how I do this. So if I mark this as complete, you'll see that it'll move to yesterday and then I didn't do it yesterday, bad on me, and then it'll go to tonight. So tonight I'll make sure I do it. But if you don't have, if you have that, so if you have the show future checkbox checked, you're gonna see all of those items. So let me see if I can get it to update. So you see how nightly reflection will show all of them. And that can be useful in some scenarios, but for me, I find it a bit um, noisy. And so I turn that off and then that way, there, there's one other item that I have like that that's daily. So my start the day off right item also has stuff like that. So I wanna make sure I make the bed, feed the dog and establish a daily highlight for today and I need to use Flonase so I can breathe. So <laughs> normally we'd have one of these across every single day, um, but instead I just have it show me the next one. And again, it's all about turning down the noise. All right, so if I take an item from Sunday and let's say this, make sure each person on the outreach list is set to repeat. Right now it doesn't have a time associated with it, but if I know how long it'll take, I can drag it. So I'm gonna drag it out and by default, it's gonna occupy 30 minutes. But if I think it's gonna take more, I can just grab and make it bigger. So that one will probably take like 45 minutes, but I need travel time to this cook off. So um, again, it's all really rough. And I think it's more important for my work items than my personal items, but it's a good practice in general when you're starting to look at what you can realistically get done. So for instance, today, I'm not gonna to get to, to do this CRM thing, so I'll move it to tomorrow, and I wanna learn more about how to cope through running, um, and then I'm gonna edit this YouTube video later on today. So that'll probably occupy that amount of time. I don't really use month view. It's a little bit <laughs> too much for me. I don't get a lot of value out of it. Um, and I do use day view sometimes if I just wanna focus on today. So if I have a really busy day and I don't want any distractions, this is really good. 
But for most of my planning, I use week view to try and block out my day, fill out the time, um, and have some intention with the, the different things I'm doing throughout the week. It's a big reason why I split out the strategic work and the junk work is I have two different colors associated with that. And so it allows me to look at the week at a glance and see where most of my time is taken up. Uh, in the case of this week, I just have a lot of meetings today. And so my meetings are in blue and then my other items are not blue. And so, yeah, it's a busy week. So when I first started with time blocking, I started by using Fantastical because Fantastical was my calendar of choice and it was the default thing that I was using. But what I found was when I started using Fantastical for non-meeting things, I ran into a handful of challenges. And those, those two challenges were, if you move a meeting around a lot in Fantastical, the iOS notifications for it don't act super great. So you'll end up getting notifications for meetings when you originally scheduled them, even though you've already moved them. There's some issue where um, iOS is not getting updated with the notification data. And so you get these phantom notifications for meetings that you're not gonna do. And it, it really drove me nuts. I reached out to Fantastical about it and they debugged it and they still couldn't figure out what it is. I ultimately think it's a limitation in how they implement the iOS notifications and there's not really anything you can do about it. The other downside to doing time blocking in Fantastical is to all of my coworkers, it looked like I was busy constantly and I am busy constantly, but it basically meant that they had no visibility into when I was truly available and truly blocked. It basically looked like I was blocked constantly. And to a certain extent, that was somewhat true, but to another extent, some of that time was more flexible than others. So some of those sessions were legitimate sessions with other people that really weren't all that flexible and couldn't be moved. And then some of the time was me doing heads down time to work on my design work. With using TickTick plus Fantastical, people can see when I'm truly blocked. And if I really needed to, I could block time on my Fantastical calendar too. But by default, Fantastical is just showing my actual meetings and I'll slide around my design time as needed. If I ever find that people are like pushing too often for me to meet and I need more design time, I can always block more time um, with, if that occurs. I wanna end this video with some pros and cons. On the pros side, it has calendar support that Things 3 was largely intentionally missing. Um, and what that blocked for me was time blocking and aligning with the meeting schedules. So, in things, you can see your, your calendar, but it's more of a to-do list and less around how much time is it gonna take me to do things. And a lot of what I'm actively managing on a day-to-day -day basis is how much time do I actually have? And I have a tendency to take on more than I can do. And so I'm actively trying to visualize my schedule to make sure I don't overburden myself. The biggest pro for me over things three was really good support for attachments. And so in Things 3, it wasn't easy to put a screenshot or a file. Um, you could kind of put a file by dragging it, but it didn't actually save it into things. It was just a reference on the file system. And that became really messy. A lot of what I do is visual in nature. And I need to be able to screenshot where I was to help orient myself a week from now when I go to take on this task. And just being able to do a quick screenshot my screenshots by default go to my clipboard and then I can paste them directly into my tick tick to do is a lifesaver and for me is enough alone um, to make the switch worth it. Other great things about tick tick are uh, the syncing between multiple devices is flawless. They have great native apps on both uh, Mac, Windows and iOS and I use all three to a certain extent um, and their web app is actually really good. Um, their iOS excuse me, their Mac and Windows apps now better mirror what they've had on the web for a long time. And that's a really good thing because for a while their web experience was significantly better than the native app experience, especially in the calendar, but more on that in a bit. Other great things, the quick capture is great. Things also has great quick capture. So I don't know that that's um, a huge pro, but they definitely don't lose on quick capture and their quick capture is really good. Their foldered lists are also really useful. So if you have two things that you wanna keep in separate lists, but you wanna keep them together, um, you can folder those together. And the nice thing there is if you click on the folder, you can actually see the two lists together 
which is a really nice uh, thing to have. All right, on to the con side. They do have template support, but the template support is fairly clunky. So to create a template, you need to create a task and then you can go to the menu and you can hit save as template. The issue is when you wanna go update that template, you then have to open an instance of that task and make the changes to it and then update it, which feels really clunky. The other thing is when you go to apply that template, oftentimes I'll have a task where I want to apply a template to that task and put the contents within there, but you can't do that. What you have to do is you have to go to the templates menu and add an instance and it all feels a little bit half-baked for me. The probably biggest con that I have is that when you decline an invite on your calendar through something like Google Calendar, it will continue to show in TickTick. And this is especially painful for me because there are a handful of recurring meetings that I was invited to as a courtesy or they'd like me to be there, but it's really not that important that I'm there. And so I've declined those calendar invites to open up my schedule so that I can work on strategic work. And I have to see them in TickTick -Tick forever. Um, I've reached out to TickTick. -Tick. Um, they know about this, but they haven't really told me if they intend to fix it. The other con is although they have really good calendar support and it's getting better all the time, you can't do everything you can do in Fantastical or Google Calendar. So if I need to move a calendar invite or delete a calendar invite, I can't do that from within TickTick. -Tick. And I don't really expect to be able to do that from within TickTick, -Tick, but they're getting really good at it. And so they're just this close to being able to do it. And if they were to do that, I might not need Fantastical anymore, or I would go into Google Calendar less. And then lastly, I touched on this a bit earlier, but Calendar View is much more readable in the browser than it is on the native app. And again, this used to be true for more um, aspects of the app, but ever since they updated to the newest version, um, all of them have gotten significantly closer to what they looked like on the web app, and that's a really good thing. Um, the calendar view is the one that still kind of struggles behind. I think the calendar view on the browser is significantly better. Um, perhaps not enough so that I'll go use it because everything else about the native app is so good. Um, but that's one thing I'd love to see them tweak a little bit. So that's an overview of how I stay organized with TickTick. -Tick. Let me know how you keep track of your important tasks down in the comments. And while you're there, drop a like and subscribe for more productivity tips. And if you want some more tips right now, there's a playlist of those right there. Thanks. Have a great day.